Well, hello everyone and welcome to Momentum channel. My name is Mo and this video as part of our Blossom portfolio review series, I have another uh, two pro profiles that we're going to go through. Uh, these are two of our friends here on Blossom that have shown interest uh, to have their reviews, uh, the portfolios actually reviewed. Before I get into it, I'm um, just going to quickly share here on my screen, my own profile. Uh, I'll, I'm actually posting multiple contents uh, throughout the week uh, related to investing, whether it's investing for beginners, um, also contents related to ETF investing, which is my main um, approach to investing, as well as some other useful content. So uh, be sure to check my, my profile out and give me a follow if that's something that the, the type of contents that interests you. Without any further ado, we're going to go take a look at our uh, two of our friends here. The first one is av average, I believe the handle is average investor. So let's take a look. Yeah, average investor by Christian. Uh, Christian, thanks for this opportunity. You had messaged me and asked me a while ago uh, to have your profile uh, reviewed. Uh, why don't we get into it? I see that two of your holdings that kind of stand out are XUU and cash as well as the other holdings. So let's dive into it and take a look at the entire positions. Your biggest holding right now is the cash, which is the Horizons uh, High Interest Savings ETF. I, my understanding is most likely you are putting your money on the side in cash. Um, in the meantime, collect some dividend distributions and then jumping on the opportunity when the opportunity presents itself to uh, sell those holdings and use the cash to buy some stocks or ETFs. Um, I think that's a smart move, particularly if you haven't really identified any specific ETF or holding that right now you um, you think it's a suitable price, for example, for you to get in. Um, I also have some of my funds in it. It's not as large as yours. Yours is sitting close to that 19.5%, but uh, it's definitely a smart approach depending on uh, your uh, kind of... Uh, horizon in terms of what you want to do with your money and when you think it's a suitable time to get invested. I've heard as well from a lot of other fellow investors that you can't time the market. So sometimes, let's say if you have some holdings um, that you have strong conviction in, you could over time gradually use dollar cost averaging and get into those. For example, you have your second big holding XUU, which is the iShares core S&P US total market. Through XUU, you get exposure to the entire US stock market. In fact, it's one of the holdings that I have in my portfolio as well. Um, something like that, even though it's currently sitting at its almost all-time high or very close to that, you know, if you you think that you can time the market, you could always gradually DCA into it. Um, I'm not suggesting that's not your approach. You might be already doing it and it's still you might want to keep some cash on the side in your cash ETF. Um the other uh, next big holding that you have is XEF, which is iShares Core MSCI East and Far East Index uh, ETF. XEF is actually one of the holdings that I have in my portfolio too. And the reason I hold it in there is mainly because I want to get exposure to the uh, international markets. Um, I want to have more control into that and have set a target asset allocation by geographical markets. And um, that's how I try to put more money in XEF. It does pay uh, a dividend as well and it gives you direct exposure to international markets. I think that's a good holding to, to have in your portfolio. The rest of holdings, I see uh, some names in the financial sector, such, such as EQB and BAM. You have some exposure to the US market through companies like Google, Visa, Amazon, excellent um, blue chip companies. You have additional exposure to financial sectors through TD. Uh, Alimentation Couchetard uh, is one of the amazing uh, Canadian businesses that you have exposure to. Microsoft, Telus, Autodesk, and a few other names here on, 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 on the screen that I showed you. I did look at your portfolio a bit earlier, and which is why I'm going to now get into some of those thoughts and observations. These are not financial advice by any means. None of the, the points that I'm sharing on this video or any other portfolio reviews is. It's just more my observations and two cents and some recommendations for you to consider. At the end of the day, it's your portfolio. So please um, take them um, very uh, with caution and kind of internalize it according to what you see fit. A few things that I noticed for you, Christian, and for others as well, hopefully it's beneficial, is your exposure to the U.S. stock market. And I did mention it in a few other videos as well. U.S. economy is one of the largest economies in the world. I think it does make sense for us Canadian investors, as we are investing in, in, our, in the stock market, not to be overly exposed to Canadian um, market alone. Uh, why? You hear many folks talk about, you know, we, have, we live in Canada, we work in Canada, our income comes from Canada. 
for those of us who have a house, our house is mostly situated pretty much in Canada. So we have a lot of, um, you know, reliance on the Canadian economy and how does the Canadian uh, overall um, as a country does. Um, whereas with U.S. being one of the largest economies in the world, it does make sense for us to expand our exposure to the U.S. For me personally, I've hit a, set a target of getting around 60% to 65% exposure to the U.S. market. With such a number in mind, I did look at your portfolio and I see, I think around only about 30 to 35% of your exposure is to the U.S. market. I think there is room for you to grow that. And I think one of the greatest ways to go about it would be possibly to do that shares of XUU. I think you could build on shares of XUU gives you the broad exposure to the entire U.S. stock market. It's a, it's a wonderful holding, in my opinion, and it's one that, you know, uh, low cost index fund um, expanding your exposure to the U.S. market. Uh, that's something that I wanted to bring to your attention. The other uh, observation that I had, and I haven't had this before in any portfolio review, so I'm, I'm glad that Christian, you're uh, presenting this opportunity for me to comment on. I did notice you have shares of XEF that I talked about. With XEF, you're getting exposure to international market. Now, hear this. You are going about it right because you want to also get some exposure to emerging markets. And I love your approach, but there is a big um, kind of point for you to consider. You have picked shares of V, Vanguard FTSE Emerging Markets. It's a great choice on, on its own, V, uh, because it gives you exposure to emerging markets. And I love the combination of an international emerging market. But there is a big difference. With Vanguard, this specific holding, V, V, uh, double E, you are getting exposure to the FTSE uh, in index. Whereas with X, um, EF, um, you're getting exposure to the um, the actually uh, MSCI index. The difference is that, and um, there are some countries such as South Korea, and you know South Korea is uh, the com the country that has some um, you know big company names such as Samsung. We all know Samsung. I, in fact, I myself actually use a Samsung phone. A phone and. It's, it's a very profitable business. It's doing well. Um, there are also uh, some exposure to companies in um, in Poland. These are two distinct examples whereby uh, these two index, uh, indices, MSCI and um, the other one, FTSE, they treat these two countries differently. When it comes to FTSE or the Vanguard products, uh, in this case, they consider South Korea to be a developed country, uh, which is why when you are... Uh, investing in V, you're already not getting exposure to the South Korean companies and uh, Poland companies, Polish companies. So that's already excluded. Now, because you've combined this with XEF, with XEF and MSCI index, they consider South Korea to be an emerging uh, country. And so is for Poland. In other words, now you are missing out on amazing companies that exist in South Korea, and to the, add to that as well to Poland. These are two distinct com countries that I can think of, but definitely South Korea is, I think, a major one for you because you've combined, uh, in this case, XEF with V. But there is a solution there. Instead of combining these two products, you could go with either of these two routes. One, I would say, combine XEF with XEC. XEC is another iShares uh, BlackRock product, and the unique thing with it is that uh, through that, you can actually be getting exposure to South Korea. And I'm going to share my screen here momentarily. I'm here showing you the um, the breakdown for XEF. You see in XEF, you don't see any South Korea listed here. Whereas if I go and take a look at XEC um, here, this is XEC, uh, the iShares Core MSCI Emerging Markets IMI Index ETF. You see South Korea on here around 13% of exposure of the XEC is to South Korea. You don't want to miss out on that. And in fact, if I go back up a little bit and take a look at the listings, the top holdings, the second large holdings here for XEC is Samsung's electronics, which is why I would suggest you couple XEF with XEC. So as I show you here, you don't see South Korea listed here with V, but instead, if you look at VIU, VIU is the um, Vanguard product for international uh, investing. Uh, as an example. So Vanguard, FTSE, develop all cap, excluding North America index. Here, you do see South Korea appearing on the list, 5.2% exposure of the weights for this. Um, moral of the story is if you want to get exposure to the uh, proper exposure to both international and emerging markets, uh, you could either go and 
have XEF and XEC together or go down the route of Vanguard path with VEE and VIU. That's what I would rec recommend. Uh, and that's what I've done for, for my own portfolio. For me, I've chosen the iShares products. I've chosen XEC and XEF. Um, and to be honest with you, I didn't know all about this either at the beginning. And in fact, in the beginning, I used to have XEF and I believe I had V at one point. But then over time, as I did more reading on this and I know, listen to other podcasts, listen to other investors who've been doing this for, for a longer while. And based on my research, I came across um, and found out about this finding that I'm sharing here with you. Um, so I think uh, it's it's okay, um, but something for you to keep in mind, maybe something that over time you can adjust your portfolio accordingly. Other than that, I would say I don't have any big, um, you know, comments on your, on your portfolio. I think overall you're you're doing a good job. The key takeaways in summary for you is maybe consider exp expanding your exposure to the U.S. market, minimize a little bit your exposure to Canadian market, and instead maybe expand on those U.S. international and emerging. And the other last comment that I made was around the pairing of those ETFs that you have in your portfolio, XEF and possibly uh, V currently the way that they are set up, I think you're going to miss out on some good com companies and good um, exposure to uh, South Korea as an example um, that you don't want to. Moving on, the next portfolio that I would like to review is from Aaron. Aaron, thank you for the opportunity. I know you were very patiently waiting and you'd actually commented earlier on asking me to have your portfolio reviewed and I'm super happy to have that opportunity, my friend. And I, I must say, I actually also very much uh, appreciate all your posts. I know recently you posted something around investing with a spouse, very, very thoughtful comments and posts. In the meantime, all the other posts that you do, uh, I, I love it, the the type of community that we have here in on Blossom that we get to learn from other fellow investors, learn a little bit about their journey and where they are coming from. I find it so inspiring and so amazing. So thank you so much for uh, taking that time to share your journey with us here on Blossom. Uh, now, moving on and taking a look at your portfolio, you're mentioning that you're, it's mainly your well simple TFSA account at, at, based on the description of the video. Sorry, description of the profile. I'm going to take a look at your profile as well. I did uh, take a sneak peek at it beforehand just so that I come a little bit more prepared um, and I have something to, to talk about on your profile. A few things that I love as I uh, walk through your portfolio. First and foremost, I see right off the bat, uh, VFE is your, one of your largest holdings. VFE is the S&P 500 by Vanguard. It gives you exposure to the U.S. market. You have close to 22% invested in there. Beautiful. I think it's an um, easy way, uh, ETF investing. And maybe I'm a little bit biased because that's the, my approach, but kudos to you for having that as one of your top holdings. The next one, I think similar to what we saw for Christian, you have holdings of cash, most likely to park some of your money on the side to repurpose it when the uh, right opportunity presents itself. XIC is your next big holding. I believe you have it and makes sense to get exposure to the Canadian markets. It's an index one that gives you pretty much an exposure to the entire uh, Canadian market. You have about 11.5% exposure to that. Uh, you have some specific Canadian um, holdings as well that you're directly investing in them. I believe these are some top companies that you want to um, get more exposure, more specific exposure to, and put more money in, such as TD, uh, Brookfield, uh, BRP Incorporation, Enbridge, Canadian um, National, um, Brookfield Asset Management, Alimentation Couchetard um, are those ones. I don't see any concern uh, with, those, with those picks personally. I think those are amazing companies with uh, strong track records. I'm not personally as familiar with BRP as much. And um, in the, personally, again, I'm not as uh, much of a big fan of an energy company such as Enbridge. But I do know that there's a, there's a, there are a lot of fans out there for these companies. So um uh, that's why I'm not going to comment much more on that. Uh, I did notice you have shares of XAW, which is iShares Core MSCI All Country World Excluding Canada Index ETF. I, I think uh, it's a smart way for you to expand your exposure to international markets, emerging markets, and uh, US markets. Um, I'm going to repeat almost the comment that I had for Christian. It's probably wise for, for you to expand your exposure to the uh, U.S. market. Right now, when I went through your portfolio and counted in what companies mainly give you exposure to um, the U.S. market, as well as what percentage of the index funds, I think yours sitting close to that 25 to 30 percent. I even took into account the exposure that you get to XAW to the U.S. market. Because with XAW, around 62 to 63 percent, if I'm not mistaken of it, is exposure to U.S. 
So given that you have around 7% of your holdings in it, if we take that seven times six or so, around four and five percent exposure of it is to US, adding everything up, you get to that 30%. I think there's room for you to increase your exposure to the US market. Uh, let's see if there's anything else that jumps out at us. Yeah, you have HXQ, you are getting exposure to the uh, NASDAQ 100. I have similar exposure, but I decided to go with QQC instead. No comment there. I do see you have some exposure, some small exposure to aggregate bond. Um, maybe Aaron, leave me a comment uh, for in on the video and let me know um, why you've chosen that. Is that because you're trying to perhaps get a little bit more exposure to fixed income? Uh, it does seem that uh, at least based on your profile picture, it seems that you're 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 young, maybe same age range as I am. Um, for me, uh, what I've decided to do, I've tried to really only go with stocks and ETFs. Uh, that are only focused on equities, not too much on the bonds. Um, I do personally think that, you know, maybe uh, only later on and down the road, I want to go um, down the path of fixed income uh, just because I these are my accumulation years and I want to, you know, get a little bit more exposure to equities, which uh, historically have shown to be uh, having higher returns. Um, I'm, I'm curious why you've chosen to... Uh, have some exposure to BMO. Love to know that. No judgment here whatsoever. I'm just out of curiosity and I want, I want to know and maybe reassess even my own portfolio based on uh, some of the learnings that I would have from you. All in all, I think those are my my key uh, inputs for you, uh, Aaron. I think your portfolio is solid. You're doing a fantastic job, my friend. Uh, keep up the great work. I think uh, even if you look at your all-time returns, it's positive, uh, showing showing good returns. Um Keep up the amazing work, Aaron. I think I would say uh, I think it's good as well that you're not you're trying not to expand too much on the number of your holdings. I think you have a good mixture of ETFs and stocks. Um, be mindful of that as well. Don't I would perhaps recommend not to try to add too too many different holdings. It just makes things easier for you to keep track of and not forget about you know what holdings you have and having to then spend too much time on researching different different companies and different businesses until it's something that unless it's something that you really really enjoy then of course fill your boots and go for go for it um thank you my friend with that this concludes uh, this video as well thank you everyone for watching this video the purpose of these portfolio reviews are here on blossom uh, and my youtube channel is not uh, just for individuals i'm reviewing their portfolio hopefully there's something to learn for other uh, investors particularly our new investors, and it inspires them as well to um, kind of apply that lens when it comes to reviewing their own portfolio, what type of holdings they have, and hopefully there are some uh, learning moments for them in it as well. If you did enjoy this video, I appreciate two things. If you could um, like this video on YouTube and follow me on YouTube, I have my channel on YouTube called Momentum Finance, and it's I'm trying to build this uh, community of like-minded folks that are inspired by um, saving for the future, investing and working towards, um, you know, getting to that point of financial independence and financial freedom. It really means a lot to me. And I would love it as well if you uh, kind of leave me a comment here on uh, on Blossom and as well, let me know what you thought of this video and if you like your own portfolio to be reviewed. Um, Blossom app, I believe is mainly available for investors in Canada. So if you, you're not in Canada, don't feel left out, you can still let me know um, maybe some of your holdings on the YouTube uh, comments and let me know and I'm happy to still provide my my two cents. Again, as I pointed out earlier, not financial advice, but rather my two cents uh, on uh, what I know and uh, some of my past learnings from mistakes or hopefully some of the success that I've had uh, in the past. With that, thank you so much, everyone, and I hope to see you all next time.